<laughs> Hello, everyone. So my name is Alex Fitzsimmons with Sela Nanotechnologies. We're a next generation battery materials company. It's great to be here. I want to talk to you today about one number. Now, lots of numbers matter, but this one is particularly important. And that number is 400. A recent survey found that nearly half of US consumers expect their EVs to get at least 400 miles of range. I'll say that again. Half of American consumers expect their EV to get 400 miles of range or more. Now, some of you might be surprised by this number, given the fact that the average American drives 37 miles per day. I was a little surprised, too, given some of the prevailing narratives out there that we don't actually need to increase range that much, we just need to lower cost. Well, two things can be true at once, and consumers have made their voice loud and clear. They want more range. Now here's, an, now, here's another number. I said I'd only give one, but here's another one. Recent EPA data says that median EV range hit 270 miles for model year 2023. One headline said, quote, that's plenty for an average weekly commute. Now, that might be true technically, but does it really matter? Consumers don't want an EV that just satisfies their weekly commute. They want an EV, at least half of them do, that can get 400 miles of range or more. So what do we do about that? I mean, there are some EVs on the road today that can get 400 miles of range, but they're few and we need to make them more affordable. So my question for you is this. How can the US enable widespread adoption of EVs when nearly half of US consumers expect more range out of their EVs than current technology can support? Well, what's clear is that if we are going to meet our EV adoption goals, the world needs better batteries. And that means higher performance. Now, as we all know, lithium-ion battery costs have declined by about 90% in the last decade, which has driven enormous growth in EV demand. But it's not enough, right? Because as we know, consumers need, are demanding that we get more. And after years of success, cost and performance have essentially plateaued as we begin to test the limits of conventional battery technology. So where do we go from here, right? From my perspective, the only way forward is through. We need innovative new battery chemistries that can increase performance and meet growing consumer demand. Now, I'm a little bit biased, but I think Sela has a key role to play. So, Sela was founded in 2011. We're spun out of a Georgia Tech lab. We're now a 400-person company that's raised almost $1 billion. Sela's goal was to engineer a new anode made of nanocomposite silicon that increases performance and reduces the need for Chinese graphite. Our product increases energy density by 20% today, and we have a pathway to get to 40%, which, if you're keeping score, that gets a lot of vehicles over 400 miles of range. But energy density isn't just about increasing range. Another tidbit from that consumer survey, it found that the top three concerns for US consumers are range, cost, and charge time. Range, cost, and charge time. We all sort of know that intrinsically, right? But what do we do about it? 
Well, let's take them in turn. Let's start with range and cost. With conventional battery technology, there's an inherent trade-off. If you want to increase range, you add more cells, which increases cost, and vice versa. We have to change that paradigm. And this calls for an overused but highly relevant word, innovation. We need innovative new battery chemistries like CELA's and many others that can break through the current performance limits and meet growing customer demand. And that is what CELA is doing. Now, cost reduction doesn't just happen overnight, it happens with scale. Which is why you also need innovative technologies that are scalable drop-in solutions that can work with any form factor, and that's what SEAL has created. So as Secretary Granholm said earlier today, last year SEAL kicked off construction uh, for our auto scale manufacturing plant in Moses Lake, Washington in partnership with DOE. At full capacity, that plant will produce enough anode material to supply up to one million EVs per year. Now, we're going to need a lot more CELAs out there if we're going to reach our EV goals. Okay, now, charge time. With higher energy density, CELA can get from 10% to 80% charge in 20 minutes, and we have a roadmap to get down to 10 minutes. That's the power of energy density. And so, again, the opportunity here is enormous, but we have to be focused on the right things, and that's range, cost, and charge time. Now, there's another reason why we need new battery chemistries, and that is well known to this crowd. China controls the battery supply chain. For example, more than 90% of the world's graphite currently flows through China. And this is where we reach the role of government policy. The historic investments from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the Inflation Reduction Act lay the groundwork for a U.S. and allied battery supply chain. No doubt. With those government resources, we should prioritize innovative companies that can scale here in the U.S. and with our allies. We have a lot of work to do in this regard. We cannot afford to squander investments in new battery technologies with the wrong market signals. And I'll give you two very timely examples. First, we need to make sure that under foreign entity of concern rules, that these battery materials that we're talking about are deemed traceable. They are eminently traceable, and they should be subject to FEOC rules. Two, we need to make sure that the direct and indirect material costs for these battery materials are counted under 45X. These are powerful market signals, but only if they are implemented the right way. We cannot expect to get a 400-mile battery and outcompete China with unmet promises and conventional battery technology alone. Conventional battery technology has gotten us far, but there's a long way to go. This is why it's important that we expand beyond legacy battery materials and blaze a new path. Now, we can do it. The, law, the, the road is long and winding, but we will get there. We just have to be focused on the right market signals to build a U.S. and allied supply chain that's focused on the right numbers, the numbers that consumers have already told us they want, range, cost, and charge time. That is how we win the race for a better battery. Thank you.